What's up, plant friends? Welcome back, and I hope you're all having a fantastic new year so far. If you're new here, my channel is focused on plants and planty stuff. If that's something that interests you, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. The year 2020 has undoubtedly been one heck of a roller coaster for everyone. I bet many of us wanted the year to end midway through. Well, these following plants decided that they were completely over it. Keep watching to see which plants said goodbye in 2020. Alright, so the first plant is my Marble Queen Pothos, or Epipremnum aureum Marble Queen. I got this from a local nursery that unfortunately ended up closing their physical store at the height of the pandemic. Um, they do still have a website, but it's been down for a supposed revamping for a while, so I'm not sure what's going on there. So let me go on a tangent here for a minute. My LECA journey has been a series of ups and downs, and I keep learning new things along the way. LECA is by no means a new concept, as this has been used as a growing media by hydroponics farmers for a while. It is, however, quite new to the houseplant community. When I started my LECA journey a year and a half ago, I first watched some videos online on how people set theirs up. Of course, I quickly learned that a constant high-level um, water reservoir is not how it's done, or just a constant full reser um, reservoir, period. So when I got this plant, I was still tweaking things with my LECA setup. But back to the plant. When I first saw this at the nursery, I was taken aback by the beautiful variegation. It was actually labeled as Snow Queen Pothos, which I guess some people say the Snow Queen and Marble Queen are the same thing, and others say the Snow Queen has more pronounced white um, variegation. I can definitely tell the difference between the two because I do have a Marble Queen, and it's not quite as splashy as this um, quote-unquote Snow Queen was. Pothos in general are difficult to transfer to LECA. For some reason, they just don't take to it well and will almost always show you within a day or two that they're unhappy. So it was with this Marble Queen. I ended up trying to save it by water propagating it, but I guess with the high amount of variegation that it had, I did not have the brightest location for it back then um, for it to develop water roots and survive. And so I slowly lost one cutting after another until I was left without this beautiful plant. My next plant is my once gorgeous Peperomia obtusifolia variegata or marble. I absolutely loved this plant. I found it in a 6 inch pot at my local Walmart for $5 and it was so full. I loved the thick and waxy leaves, the coloration, and just the ease of care with it. It was doing so well and even grew some new leaves. I had a couple of leaves that I propagated and gave to my mom, which she actually grew into a sizable plant. However, come winter time, although my reservoir would dry up completely, what I learned after I had contemplated what happened um, was that I should have let the plant sit without any water for a bit longer and waited until the leaves felt soft. But because I kept refilling the water reservoir just because it was dry, this beautiful plant ended up rotting. The next picture is of it after I had noticed some leaves turning brown. I took those leaves off and repotted it into dry leca, but I think by then it was already too far gone. Um, since then, I have yet to find a peperomia full enough to even come close to what I once had. Up next is my Tillandsia xerographica. This one is another beauty. It's also sometimes known as the king of air plants, and you can definitely see why. Now, the demise of this plant was pure inattention to its variety and needs. In the air plant genus, there are xeric varieties and mesic varieties. Xeric varieties are naturally found in drier climates like deserts and most often live on rocks. Therefore, they're highly drought tolerant. Mesic varieties, on the other hand, come from more humid environments like rainforests. I'm not going to get into other differences between the two. Um, maybe I can do an air plant care video later on another time. Um, but basically, when I did my brief research on this air plant, um, I didn't do enough of it. If you're a beginner and don't really know where to look, some websites like the WikiHow sites and all that kind of stuff um, would only tell you to dunk your air plants in water once a week or give them a 15 to 30 minute soak once a week and mist them on top of that. 
they don't go into the different types and cares for each one. So basically, I was soaking this xerographica in water for 15 minutes at a time, or sometimes longer if I forget. And I would do that once a week, and then also mist it on top of that on another day. Um, needless to say, that was way too much water for this poor air plant. It eventually rotted and died. I have since acquired a couple new xerographicas, and I hardly even water those, and they're doing great. The fourth plant is a Calathea ornata. This plant was given to me by the person that I had won my Syndapsis Pictus Exotica in a giveaway from. She added it to the prize because she was getting frustrated with it because it wasn't doing well, and she basically wanted someone else to try to care for it and save it. And oh boy, what an undertaking. I typically try to stay away from Calatheas just because they are so difficult to care for and it's so dry here in Arizona. As I've mentioned several times in my other videos, I don't like using humidifiers. So I said I'll try my best to save the plant. The smallest leaf almost immediately became crispy and fell off. I struggled with the other two, but after a month or so, it seemed to have finally acclimated and I saw a new leaf sprouting. One of the other original leaves dried up eventually, um, but it sprouted and unfurled another new one after that. So this plant basically had no more than three leaves at a time, but I was still determined. However, it eventually just decided to call it quits in the middle of the summer and it dried up faster than I can blink my eyes. I've been tempted to get a full plant every time I'd see one at Lowe's or Home Depot, um, just because those light pink stripes on dark green leaves just look so gorgeous. Um, but that's exactly how Calatheas get you. They look so darn pretty, but they'll stab you in the back the first chance they get. The next plant is my first Bachera aquatica or money tree. These plants are quite easy to find, even in big box stores but I really like their leaves and how they fan out. I did my research as usual and found out that in nature, they live in swampy areas. So in my head, I was thinking, okay, so they probably like to stay moist. Oh, how wrong I was about that. <laughs> you see, even if they did come from swampy areas, money plants as houseplants were not grown in swamps. They're not used to that. Um, also, they store water in their thick trunks. Therefore, they do like to actually dry out between waterings. I think the reason beginner plant parents fail is because sometimes there's just such a steep learning curve when it comes to caring for plants, and almost always the mistake is in overwatering and not doing enough research. So after four months of staying moist all the time, the base of the trunk of my pachera became moldy and mushy, and eventually the whole plant died. My variegated Hoya carii is up next on this sad, sad list. This is another plant I was in love with, along with my regular green carii. I'm not sure exactly why this one died because I was caring for it the same way I care for my regular green one, and that one is thriving. I'm assuming the variegated version is not as hardy as the green one, I don't know. But after a while, the leaves slowly turned a light brown and became soft and one by one fell off. I couldn't save the main stalk either. What's even more heartbreaking is that I can't find the same size plant for a decent price nowadays. When I got this one, I paid $45 for it. And now I'm seeing that variegated carry ice this size go for $60 or more. But I'm going to be patient and hold out until plant prices eventually fall and then try again because I do want another um, variegated Hoya carry eye. Plant number seven is a Syngonium Pink Illusion. Ever since I got my Gold Illusion Syngonium, I've wanted a pink variety because I just have a thing for the color pink. However, I have yet to run into a healthy looking pink one at any of my big box stores. So I ended up ordering this one online. Well, it didn't do so well being shipped in the middle of the scorching Arizona summer. When I received it, it was limp. I gave it some time, tried to revive it, which it did a little bit, but some of the smaller leaves turned crispy, and then the whole plant just after a while went back to being limp and just wouldn't come back anymore. I tried water propagating what I could save, but those just rotted in the water. So until now, I'm still on the hunt for some pretty pink syngoniums, and I refuse to have them shipped anymore.
A Hoya macrophylla variegata is the next plant. This plant was actually on my wish list, but I didn't have it for long, literally just 10 days. I ordered it online. Well, it didn't appreciate the Laka life. Within a few days of being in Laka, I noticed some browning on a leaf, even though I let it dry out before transferring and I didn't fill the reservoir immediately. Then the next day, another leaf was turning brown. As you can see from the picture, it only had four leaves. Unlike bigger plants, if I lost a leaf or two, it was okay because it still had the rest of the plant to be able to acclimate to its new environment. Well, when you only have four leaves, that's much harder to do and I ended up losing all four of them. The next two plants are both bonsais. A Kingsville boxwood bonsai and a Japanese juniper bonsai. They had a good life at first, new growth, bright green leaves, all of that. Um, but my problem started when I pruned them. All of a sudden, they both stopped doing anything. Then the boxwood ones started getting dry leaves. Like they weren't brown and dry, but the green leaves were just hard and crispy and would come off the branches easily. And then I noticed the trunk starting to dry out too. On the juniper, I noticed some leaf tips turning brown and drying out. Then, after some time, the greener needles became hard and chunks would crumble easily. I didn't know what was going on. I had them under a grow light because I know they like bright light and I had them in a pebble tray for humidity. But I think on top of the stress from my inexperienced pruning hands, plus the record-breaking summer temps we had this year, they just couldn't handle it. They weren't completely dead when I disposed of them, but I just couldn't look at them anymore. Lesson learned, I will never get a bonsai again because I just don't have the right environment for them. Alright, three more plants to go. The next two are Hoyas that I ordered from the same online shop. The Hoyas on this list, I'm not sure why they struggled so much with the Leka transition, but they did, unlike some of my other Hoyas. The first of the two is a Hoya australis. It had a really long vine and a good number of leaves on it. It was fine for a bit, but then the vines started to dry up. Then the leaves became wrinkly and soft. They looked like they were dehydrated. It turned out the Leka roots were not growing fast enough to replace the soil roots that it was shedding. There were some tiny ones growing, but not enough to sustain the plant. Eventually, I was left with a leafless vine. And the same thing happened with the next plant, which is the Hoya lanceolata or Hoya bella. It just did not grow roots quick enough and the leaves became wrinkly and soft and the whole plant became dehydrated. I tried to propagate it, but it was too late. Lastly is my Fabian Aurelia stump. I'm not sure why I didn't take a picture of this plant by itself when I first got it, so I do apologize for the crappy picture, which I had cropped from a group picture. I had wanted this plant for a while because I really liked its tree-like structure, um, but I could never find a good size. They were always bigger than what I wanted. Then I stumbled upon this one in a 4-inch pot at my Home Depot and I bought it. I took care not to overwater this guy because it had a really chunky trunk. Um, but just like the last two Hoyas, it didn't grow like a roots quickly enough. I was starting to see little nubs where new roots were growing, but the leaves and branches were turning crispy and falling off. I wanted to keep trying with it even though it had lost most of, most of its leaves because I knew after a while it'll just grow more leaves. But one day as I was inspecting the plant, I found a little mound of mealybugs in one of the little nooks in between the branches. So off to the trash can it went. Um, I know that's harsh, but without much foliage to sustain itself, it would have just succumbed to pests in my opinion, and I really don't want to risk the bugs infecting my other healthy plants. So there you have it folks, my depressing list of plants that called it quits in 2020. There were some other ones, rescued clearance plants, that I couldn't bring back. Um, I didn't include those because they were pretty much already dead on arrival. So what plants did you lose in 2020? Let me know in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? If so, don't forget to give it a like. And as always, you guys are awesome for stopping by and thank you so much for watching. Bye!